like that, do that, and then after that, if you guys want, we can do autographs and sign books and, you know, uh, all that sort of stuff. Or body parts. <laughs> Whatever. Yes, sir, you in the back. This may be kind of an improper question in a bookstore, but is there ever going to be an electronic edition of Android screen? Um, I have a I have an in-depth answer to that, and the in-depth complex answer is I don't know. Uh, it's it's really up to, it's really up to there is there's no there is there's on Kindle oh, and sometimes like, yeah somebody here's got to have it it's it's available it's available like uh, electronically I know that because I I've, I've seen people read it on on the Kindle at the very least so it should be available in other formats the only I, all my books actually at this point are available and if if it's not I don't know which alternate universe you've come from but who's president there. <laughs> It should be available. Can you give me about 48 hours to answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait. So it was, where are you in San Francisco? I was like, oh, they must be excited about Obama. I was like, why is San Francisco Obama? I don't see why they would be excited about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I don't know. I don't know. It's not, it, it should be available. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Um, so there's that. Uh, Chris Garcia. Where can I find those fantastic uh, Q&As? Surely you must do something with them. The, uh, the, the Q&As for, well, the um, first one, Denise Jones, Superbooker, is, this is my story that makes everybody sick because I wrote it, I submitted it to Subterranean Magazine, uh, and 15, letters, it was, 15 minutes later it was bought and paid for. Wow. So, oh, wow. This is why we love This Subterranean. is why we online, like mm. online publishing. Not that you shouldn't buy analog fantasy and science fiction and Asimov because they so very need you to yes. yes or Shimmer Magazine which I'm the art director for it's right over there, over there. yes um, but that's available there okay. and the State of Super Villainy actually put up on my website over Christmas because uh, it was a it was a giveaway actually because uh, we were doing a fundraiser for uh, Nora uh, Nazarian because she was having problems with her house and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, all combined, all the people who pitched in, we raised $30,000 for her. So we caught her up on her rent. We actually put in the sewer line that she needed. Um, and I think she spent the rest on blow. So. <laughs> yeah, I, this, is, this is the rumor that gets back to me. I'm only saying what I've been told. So uh, In his alternate universe. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Questions? Comments? Yes, ma'am. Okay, in Android's dream, how did you come up with the, this line? Dirk Muller didn't know if he could fart his way into a major diplomatic incident, but he was ready to find out. It came to me at a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Tortilla! <laughs> No, I mean, and we're back. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, uh, honestly, what happened was uh, it was the second book of the two book deal that I had for for Tor. They bought Old Man's War. Um, and then they said to me, you know, because it was the first book that they bought from me, and they said, well, as long as we're going to buy one, we should buy two, which was, as long as we're getting you really sick cheap for your first book, let's get you sick cheap for your second one. <laughs> and they said, so do you have any other ideas about, you know, a book? And I, of course I didn't, so I said, yes, I do. <laughs> and, uh, and I sold Android Streamed on the following pitch. It's the... Uh, Man solves diplomatic crisis through the use of action scenes and snappy dialogue. They're like, great, we'll take it. And the thing is, since it was bought, you know, I was like, and they didn't care. They're like, oh, yeah, you'll do this, you'll do another romance, but whatever the other thing is, you do whatever you want. I'm like, well, if I get to do whatever the hell I want. And I thought, what is the most ridiculous thing that I can think of to actually put in a book and can I pull off actually making it worth reading? And so the thing is, you know, somebody farts someone else to death. I mean, completely, you know, the eight-year-old in me was going, yeah! You know, <laughs> but I wanted to see if I could actually make it work. And this is really funny because I'm trying to explain this to my father-in-law, right? <laughs> my father-in-law, salt of the earth, you know, NRA cap going, well, okay, so you sold us one book, what's this next book? You're going to write. It's like, let me tell you. And so I described the first chapter, because it's the only chapter I think of, this. there's a guy, and he's revenging his father and through farts and it, you know, my wife is right behind me going, and my, my father-in-law because he's looking at me like and my wife is like oh god oh, dear. oh god because you know she knows that like after I go outside to like you know get a coke or something like that her, her dad's going to look at her and it's like you got to remind me why you married that man <laughs> and so and so I wrote that first chapter you know like I said just basically to see if I could pull that shit off and uh 
I gave it to my wife to read, and this was actually one of the nicest things she ever said to me, which was she brought, brings it in and looks at me and she says, I don't know how you did this. <laughs> But you actually made it. That's exactly right. <laughs> Look at the first chapter. Straight out of my ass. Um, so that's that's really the story. It's just like it was really stunt writing. You know, I figured if I could pull it off, I would. Corollary to that: what are the best first lines in a book I've ever read. What's your favorite? What's my favorite? Yes. Oh, jeez, man. I, now, you don't have to have it memorized. You know, the problem is that I'm so high right now. Uh, <laughs> What book is that from? <laughs> 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 the next one, yeah. I can't, you know, I actually do have, because I'm a big fan of, of First Lines, I really am, because I really believe you just gotta go bam right from the beginning. Um, and for the life of me, I'm trying, do you, have, bail me out. Help me. <laughs> first line from a book you really like. Um... Not mine. I was just watching you go, and I was not thinking about my own personal favorites. Um, I'm dragging you in to rescue me, because I'm flailing here. <laughs> uh, See, look what I've done. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because all of the ones that I'm coming up with are, are things like, you know, it's the best of times, it's the worst of the time, of times, which is just too easy. I, that said, I actually really do like... The, yeah. Marley was dead to begin with. Yes. Like, well, <laughs> What am I here for? <laughs> Marley's gone. Shit. <laughs> I'm here for Marley. Yeah. And the concert. Marley and you, right? Yeah, exactly. Marley and oh god. <laughs> we had a dog. It was beautiful, and it wrecked our house, and then it died. And we were very sad. I'm sorry. The spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I ruin that for you? Yeah. I'll answer that on my blog. Has that? <laughs> No, the... Uh, apparently, Harlan Ellison was giving a lecture uh, on the topic of opening stories, and he was going on about how the opening must breathe, the opening must have life, and from the back of the room came Avram Davidson's voice, Mar Marley was dead to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and later, Harlan stabbed him. <laughs> He's surprised. I'm sorry, I shouldn't speak ill of Harlan. He's actually been very nice to me. So, yeah. No, he has! Shut up! I see you. You know, Harlan showed up on my, my thing. I, I one time said on the way over, I had a dream that uh, that I someone that my publisher had sent Harlan uh, Ellison my book to blurb, and the blurb came back, this is everything that's wrong with science fiction today. <laughs> dream, man. You know? And so the thing is, is, I said, now the problem is, having written this, people will now start thinking that Harlan Ellison actually did do this, <laughs> and, and, and it will become part of his lore. Yeah, Harlan Cousin, then he set his house on fire. <laughs> he raped his kitten, man. <laughs> And, you know, and, so, and then, of course, immediately people will start saying, hello, kitty. <laughs> Stay away from Harlan. <laughs> and so, you know, immediately people started saying, you know, well, I heard Harlan once killed a man in Reno just to, you know, whatever. <laughs> All these things that Harlan did. And then Harlan also shows up in the comment thread going, well, I haven't read your stuff, but I'm sure it's not, you know, I'm sure that if I read it, I would never say something that horrible, you know, except to your face or whatever. <laughs> It was actually very, very cool. And then all of a sudden, it was really cool. Well, the thing about it was, all these people were like, yeah, you know, Harless and Ellison once put, uh, you know, uh, Robert Silverberg in a microwave. <laughs> As soon as Harlan actually showed up, you know, and people are like, oh, Harlan, I love your stuff. It's so cool. Oh my God, he showed up on your mind. It's Harlan. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh my God. You're not going to be able to taste shit for anything but shit for a week, man. What are you doing? So, in any event, so that was, that's my, that's my Harlan story. One day I hope to meet him and I hope he doesn't kick my ass. <laughs> Hi, any Harlan stories? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time. <laughs> you can make one up. That's the whole point. <laughs> You're still recording that, right? <laughs> uh, anyone else? Anyone? Anyone? Yes? What are some of your favorite whatever threads? What, some of my favorite whatever threads? Leave it aside the ones where I, I challenge people to taunt the shit out of me. You know, because those are classic, you know, oh, the, yeah. for, the, for the hate, uh, the, your hate mail will be graded. Uh, we ran a contest that 
people to uh, just insult the crap out of me, you know, do the, ha- the hate mail. And the best of them would actually be published in the book. And so on the back cover of the hate, your hate mail will be graded, uh, is uh, the, the winner, uh, which is... Um, do you have it over there? Read it out loud. Uh, unfortunately, it's covered by a copy of Waiting for Athena. Oh, jeez. No, 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 that's fine. No, no, don't open it. So oh, it's, uh, uh, it's the oh. anal back in Banal. <laughs> Banal! <laughs> Just smother that punchline. Leave now. <laughs> All right. If only for her sake, you can say. So, yes, puts the anal back oh, in Banal. Uh, the, oh. the winning line is... What's the anal back in the Really? It really is an alternate. It is an alternate. How was Obama's first 100 days? Oh, man. Oh. So, but, so that was great. But other, other than that... Um, you know, I, I, I did it. I always like the ones that are that are long enough and controversial enough that the people who actually haven't been to whatever show up, and they start immediately flailing, and the and the, <laughs> the regulars go, "Oh, new toy." <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the you know the, the you know the dance of the hammers, and uh, I find nothing wrong with that because the thing is, is that the, you know the hammers come out, but they're very polite hammers. Like, excuse me. <laughs> and I, you know, I love that. I think that you know, just watching every once in a while, you know, someone come and you know, it's clear that they're trying to bait me, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna let the the, the whatever whatever Aryans or whatever you want to call them uh, take care of this, and and inevitably someone comes up and uh, Mythago, are you here? You're gonna get your okay, yeah, that. she takes care of about sixty percent of them. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> Not pay a cent, but you know, so there are a few regulars that are just like, oh, you know, new toy. Hey, I need to chew my. You Speaking know. of new toys, huh? hello. It's totally flirting with you. Hello. No, aren't you the cutest tail? Tortilla. <laughs> Watch for the things. <laughs> um, so yeah, as far as it goes, that's those are the ones that I kind of enjoy the most. So that's what you actually said. That. Okay, you pick one. And we'll get over here. Do I have a book coming out? No, we've got uh, a couple that are shopping right now, um, and then I've got fiction coming out in uh, two best of the year collections coming out this year. And um, oh no, wait, I do have a book coming out. (laughs) (laughs) Holy cow! I totally forgot. (laughs) It's not a novel. That's uh, that's what I was thinking when he said book. Um, Subterranean Press is bringing out my first uh, collection. Um, it's coming out in June, and it's called um, Scenting the Dark. Who's writing the introduction? <laughs> John Scalzi. <laughs> and I figure people are going to buy it just for the intro. Uh, no. no, no, not after, not, not We're after tonight. Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, want, you want this book. You need this book. <laughs> yes, sir. Classic Heinlein or Sex Price? <laughs> <laughs> Classic Heinlein or Sex Price. That's so hard to choose. <laughs> The problem is, it's like, you know, I love me some Heinlein. Okay. <laughs> really? No. Really? It's so hard to believe. You, Scully, Heinlein, what? Um, but I gotta tell you that, you know, the 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 Heinlein frontier for me, after after which I do do not actually venture, it's pretty much Friday. You know, you get to Friday and you're like, all right, I see where you're going. And then you read the, the next one, which was, which was this? Tell Cat- Beyond the Sunset. Tell Beyond the Sunset. And you're just like, oh. <laughs> 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 and, and you're just like, I want, I want, a, I want a chart that, that, that plots his sex craze versus the size of his prostate. <laughs> oh, no, come on. Highland. I mean, I, you know, I, I just... You, the the line you do not cross? That was, that was it. No, but it's true. Come on, because you just know he's just sitting there going, uh, I now must have a rich fantasy life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that's recorded. <laughs> but, but, the, but the fact... Was this the shark? Yeah. <laughs> 
slowly, <laughs> slowly, yes, yeah, silently in the night, the Highland Society Janissaries come. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, after, after there are two things that are going on. One, just sex, 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 uh, and the other thing is, is that he decides, and I think he, that he knew that it was all, you know, where where things were going. So he decided to wrap things up with a bow. He had his entire universe all of a sudden tie in, and, and that's just never good, you know. So, but what can you do? You know, he at that point he's he's earned credit, you know. So we can we can name other authors alive right now, but we won't. <laughs> I know Nick Mamatis is somewhere here. Go read his book. He will name names, uh, and we love him for it. Uh, but you know the authors where you're going. Well, you know you're continue, you're buying on credit. You know what what you got 20 years ago. So, but uh, and I, I certainly hope to be that way when I'm 60. <laughs> So, uh, any other questions? Way in the back. How's the sequel to Android's Dream coming? Oh, it's a fucking nightmare. Uh, <laughs> now, are you asking because you didn't actually see the entry where I said that I stopped writing it, or? Um, like, no. no! Yeah, I missed that entry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I stopped writing, it and I will tell you why. Oh, sir. Uh, the thing was, I discovered that there was a problem, and uh, anybody who has not actually read Android's Dream, you'll want to plug your ears now because spoiler alert coming. Um, at the at the very end of the at the very end of the book, the guy's best friend is a computer that runs a planet, and his girlfriend is the world's richest woman, um, and that presents a lot of issues. Because uh, what kind of trouble can you get in that you know a computer running the planet or his girlfriend's money won't be able to solve, you know? And I thought, you know, I was like, well, I can just, you know, I can just work my way around it. It's like, no, his girlfriend's worth more than the Waltons, you know? His I'm best. I'll write you a long email, John. Yeah, you know, it's just. Don't kill the girlfriend. Yeah, no, you can't kill the girlfriend. That's a cheap way out. My God, you sexist pig! <laughs> We're gonna kill her and have her pregnant. Too, you know? everything in Iceland? What? No. <laughs> so, you know, this is, the, this is the problem. And so what happens is, uh, I, what I, I told Tor, I was like, well, I need to stop this because I need to start it from the, from the bottom. It's going to st I'm still going to write it. It's still going to be in the same universe. I'm going to have a, I think I'm going to have a different lead character who will be cool. He just won't be Harry Creek. Because Harry Creek, you know, his problems are solved. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, I guess I'll go, you know, pretend that my, my best friend won't actually get me out of this scrape. You know, I bet, uh, I'll pretend that I don't have a credit card that doesn't have unlimited money on it. You know, I'll just pretend that I actually have problems. You know, he doesn't have problems. And that's it. bad for drama. So... <laughs> But yeah, yeah, exactly. Eventually, yeah, you just got to keep escalating. The pay. I don't. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna say something. Things that piss me off. Um, huh. No. No, really. What pisses you off? I will tell you. I will tell you. I, I've been. I've been. I've. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I've been reading my really? reviews. And, <laughs> and and there's one thing that just always just pisses me off. Um, which one. is just no, 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 no. <laughs> the one I'm talking about. Oh, oh sorry. Stop <laughs> egging me. Uh, and it, it is that uh, er, when they mention characters, they say, "Well, you know, his main character, but he's fine and blah blah blah." But it's really a, a Mary Sue character, and it's just because it's in all of my every every review is really well. You know, the main character is Mary Sue. It's like no, the main character is not Mary Sue. She's just not incredibly fucked up to begin with. You know, there's a difference between having a character who's you know fairly on beam and being Mary, a Mary Sue. Mary Sue would be like, you know, uh, Harry, Harry Creek, five foot eight, a little more portly than average, but still devastatingly handsome and sexy. <laughs> Stepped in and they said, thank God, Harry, you are here. Ah, uh, yes, I will solve that problem for you. Now, no, no, this is what I do. Now I'll go retire and have sex with many people. You know, <laughs> these sorts of things, you know, they're like, you know, John Perry, he's his, he's his, you know, Mary Sue, and I was like, okay, fine, and my, my immediate response is that, well, just because the dude lives in my, in my uh, town, in my house, and is a writer, doesn't mean he's my Mary Sue, <laughs> which is, I understand is unconvincing. Uh, <laughs> you know, he does happen to be named John. John. <laughs> 
It's in a tie. That's because the the the, the keyboardist for Journey is is John Jonathan Kane. I never mind. Been Steve. What? You've been telling that same story since I interviewed you. You know what? But it just keeps getting better each time. But yeah, you know, soon enough, if I keep repeating it long enough, so maybe somebody will believe it. It worked for George Bush. <laughs> Approval rating. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But you know, so but so this this, this drives me crazy. But then Harry Crazy, he's a Mary, he's a Mary Sue. Uh, I wrote uh, something from Metropolis, and you know, the the review was, oh, this is yet another Mary Sue character. It's like that Mary Sue character. This was the the nineteen year old screw up who gets a job as a pig farmer on this first day of uh, of the job, gets enveloped in shit. I'm like, yeah, I want to be that character. It's like when I was right out of college, which is the equivalent of this. My first job was. Uh, you know, a movie critic at, uh, you know, a newspaper. I watch movies for a living, and I got to tell people about it. For an egotistical 22-year-old man, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> it's like, why would I want to, this guy's not my marriage, so I'm his. <laughs> <laughs> Shit drives me crazy, man. So anyway, just because the character does not immediately, you know, in pain or, you know, all this sort of stuff, it doesn't mean he's a Mary Sue. He's just, you know, not no. in pain. No, of course. <laughs> you do it so not do it in your sex phone voice, please. No, no, of course. Thank you. I feel much better now. Uh, last couple of questions and we're gonna wrap it up. Anyone else? Anyone else? Because then we'll just wrap it up without any more questions. Yeah. Yes. What, what made what made you think this crawl is a good idea? Sorry. What? What made you think that that you know trying to play first fiddle to Mr. Skulls was a good idea? Um, because <laughs> <laughs> because he's he's very generous and nice, um, and he's um handsome and no. um. <laughs> This is true, but it's entirely irrelevant. <laughs> um, we, uh, see, seriously, he's, he's one of my, my favorite people, and we, uh, we, we did this at Worldcon, um, where, strangely, they had scheduled me for a reading and not him. And they scheduled me for an hour, and I'm like, I'm not going to read for an hour. So I, um, I said, do you want half my reading slot? And so we did this tag team thing, and it was fun. Yeah, we had a really, we had a really good time at Denver. Well, we had a really good time in Denver. Yeah, yes, in general. Oddly enough, it went well for us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. I don't know how much more I can apologize to you. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, I felt like it was more fun doing this where we're switching off and, and taking turns mm -hmm. than it was just reading. You know, it, it's like... The difference between an anthology and a collection. With an anthology, it's it's you get much more variety, and it's I find it more engaging. When I'm reading a collection, even though I have one coming out that you should be. Um, Who's doing the introduction to that? John Scalzi. All right. But but when I'm reading in a, a collection, I tend to want to read a story and then wait a while before I read the next story because otherwise, you know, you do become aware of the writer's ticks. Yeah. Not that. You should, <laughs> but um, but John Scalzi's introducing it. <laughs> but seriously, seriously though, I mean, this is actually something I thought about in terms of like readings. You want to make you want to make readings fun. You want to make people actually want to come to readings. And it's like, did I mention again how god thankful I am? You guys actually showed up. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you so much. But and part of that is. We, you know, we get along like a house on fire. We have fun, um, and if we're having fun, uh, we figured that you guys will too. So, uh, and we figured that's that's good, right? It's fun, you know, and it's also great for us because you know, at the moment, you know, aside from her new, you know, chat book, which is coming out, uh, we don't. I don't have a. I don't have a new book to flog. I don't have any other reason to do this just to have fun. You know, and it's fun just to do it without, you know, trying to pressure anybody. One of your books is on the uh, the book club book reading... Old Man's War. Right. Old Man's War. Right. Is, is this month's... 
You can say that better than I can. I just saw it on the website. Oh, it was actually last month. Oh, yeah. last month. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> so all of you, we were going to for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so, but anyway, so, you know, it was, it was actually just an opportunity to have yeah. a really good time. And, and I'm in theater and basically a ham. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not bacon. <laughs> Lady, I got that covered. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you.